Hey guys, uh, we're going to be building the Ohialahua tree, which is a Hawaiian tree um, we picked out specifically because it's about 80% of the Hawaiian forest out there. It's a great tree for making your upper canopy and then a couple of small versions of the bottom forest. Um, I am a speech or technical artist, but I'm also a uh, resident woods frolicker for speech tree software for the past nine years. Um, you may notice me from the live feed, but um, yeah, her brain. If it's any consolation to you guys, I have zero technical experience before I came to this software. And so part of what I wanted to show you today is an introductory look at how to use it. And we're gonna make a tree in 20 minutes. I hope this is more like um, Bob Brass sort of end of show, building a tree, happy little tree times. Um, so <laughs> this is our tree. We got flowers, uh, we're waiting the bark, and we're gonna get started. If you guys want a more in-depth tutorial, I did want to point out that Genevieve Gangon, Mira Pickeye over there who's running the booth, and myself, we came up with an hour-long one that has a more um, really, really lengthy chock full of stuff. So let's get started. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're gonna be starting with our textures loaded in today. We got a blank scene here and we've got a couple textures loaded in. We've got a bark and we have already made our upper canopy tree textures. Speed Tree is a very basic program. It's really easy to approach here. We've got a generator window and basically you're gonna stack these tree parts on top of each other in order to make a tree. These are templates over here. So we've got a trunk template. Um, the base of this is actually a tube shape, so the stuff that we've added on here is so that it's maybe easy to stack. Uh, we only want one trunk for this tree. We're going to go ahead and add some branches on there, and then we've got some properties. I'm going to make this a little bigger so you can see. There we go. Uh, first thing we're going to do is you're going to decide how these go on the trees. You can either add these one by one in the absolute or we can change the style. I pretty much use interval property for almost everything. I don't know if that's like a favorite or how we get the shaping out, but I just have a favorite thing there. The second thing I wanna do is I wanna add variance. So I might spiral them around and do that. Every polygon counts in a game tree. And the first thing you can start to do is shape these guys up, but you can also change the segment count. So once we go in here, we've got are different segments in here, and this is too many for game street. So you might do something like change the optimization as we shape those up. Uh, something that's gonna get a lot of character is we're gonna grab these guys and we're gonna give it some noise. Um, this is in the spine tab. Hey, Brent, all in here we have also gravity. And I like to add some variance in there just to switch those up and we're gonna do some different volumes in here. The thing about trees is they are all very, very weird looking and they all bend different ways. Gravity is going to be um, here we're in a big one. I almost always add plus and minus on that. We're going to add some noise on the base. This tree is a uh, neat tree. It grows like straight out of the side of the mountain. Sometimes the volcano will come and wipe out the entire forest and it just sort of does its thing. So we're going to give it some character there. All of these adjustments are based on a curve system. So this right here is a profile curve. If I wanted to take, I'm gonna move that out of the way. <laughs> so I tend to give some character to the bottom of the tree and add more noise to the bottom, I can do that. And I can also remove it from the top. You'll notice in here with the noise, I might get a little crinkly. And <laughs> we fix that with the smooth buttons. You can actually do some adjustments that way. Now that you've got your tree's basic shape set up, we're going to go into your textures. With my bark, you can drag and drop it, or you can also go ahead and select it from the material bar. And do it and load it in that way. For our leaf textures for the upper canopy, it will be in like a real tree, you'd have individual leaves. But when you're making a games tree, you're gonna have to source your textures and figure out how to place the upper canopy. So one of the ways we do that is you have a separate file and you're gonna actually set up your tree parts. These are a 3D mesh that we put ahead of, you don't have to use a 3D mesh, you can use a flat one and use the cutout maker. And we've exported that out. You can go to file, export material and pull that back into your game. So we did that with a couple of different pieces here. We've got the bear, I'll try to find it, but this will be tiny. There we go. 
that's our beer piece. We're gonna go ahead and add this with um, another set of branches. So um, what we do here is we're gonna set this up on a frond. So we're going to add fronds. Um, Get with the difference. There's different white ways to do this. Um, a lot of people will use leaf meshes only, and they won't use the fronds. I like the fronds because I like a little bit of control in the branches. And this is going to hold our texture. So on that frond texture, we're going to go material, and we're going to find our bare cluster. And let's go. So these are very 2D. So the one the thing you want to do with this is you want to turn them all different directions to create the semblance of 3D in there. And we also going to uh, control that. What, what we're going to go to the branch, and we're going to go to the skin tab and put this on spine only, and that just drop down our poly count. So these spine that they're being held on doesn't count in the final count. Um, to control the shape and where these are, you can go back to the gin tab and add a few more in there if you would like and kind of spin those around on the frond texture itself. Frond is, we're gonna roll it. Um, it's actually, uh, it's got a start angle and it's got some stuff there. I'm just gonna max that out and we're gonna add some variance in there so it looks a little different. Now we need to attach the upper canopy onto the rest of the tree. This tree is looking a little ugly. <laughs> um, so we're gonna do that by going into the cutout editor. Now this one's been cut out already over the top. And when we've got a high poly on the bottom, but we want to set our LEDs in here as well. So what we do for that is we remove points and we save out the second version of it. And the lowest version needs to be either two or one, as low as we can go. And we would save that out as well. These anchors are in here and you see the little spots for one and for two. Um, those are going to be my attachment points for my other textures on top of the tree. We're going to go ahead and save that out. And we're going to add a leaf mesh. All right, my leaf mesh is the second texture I'm going to put on the tree. We've made that ahead of time, so we're going to just pull that in here. We're going to look at that. That's, I've got spring textures and all the other textures loaded in. That's a flower. And the spring texture, this is the one we want. So multi one spring. And <laughs> it's hard to see you on my computer. All right, it comes in small. You've got a skin tab in here. We can adjust the size. And I like my, what really gives it away here is that they're all the same size and they're all doing the exact same thing. So to add some realism in here, we're going to uh, one, change up the size. If I wanted to make them bigger on the inside of the tree, I would grab this curve here and pull that out. And this is according to the front branch. So if you want to do it like at the top of the tree, you would grab trunk and you could make them smaller at the top of the tree or, or larger. The second thing we want to do is we want to curl and fold these. Um, speed tree is very, very simple with every single step. So you kind of want to work left to right through the properties to get them set up. And the same thing with orientation for leaves. One of the things I like to do to control the position is actually to use sky influence. So they're all facing the same way. And this way I know my normals are up. And we're going to go ahead and add um, some variance in there too. So we like to fold those down. If this is a shelfy tree, you could fold them down and then start building them out. Um, this one's not really a shelfy tree, so we're going to add some twist variants in each of these to get them started. And I might turn them a little bit to the right, maybe do some right left in there so they're all kind of mixed up. Where we generally would spend a little bit more. I feel like the size is a little off on the inside there when I go back and tweak and do some things. So, for uh, when anchor points are going to attach right to the next one. So as long as you have an anchor, you can add a next set of leaves. And so that would be our little part there. And this is really important for making those 3D structures kind of roll in and like we're in fluid. Um, you can branch off here if you wanted to add broken branches or stuff on the bottom. But we've got pretty much a complete tree here. It's not perfect. The uh, last thing you'd want to do before um, setting this tree up, I don't have to do it, but we're in. I'm going to go ahead and set my material cluster for the second leaf there, so you can see it's the small one. 
And we're going to arrange those just a little bit as well, just so they don't look so, so bad. So hard to do this live, you know, pretty in front of you. But <laughs> as you're reading, I might have put the, that's the flower on there also. Uh, one of the things that speech tree is very specific for is you have lighting control. So once you've got this on this tree, you might notice you have, you know, little dark pockets. So you can fake that and add little bits of, um, different lighting in there to help fill, fill your extra product. When you're ready to export this, this file goes into Unity. It's got a wind animation that can be set to it and then your all your LODs will come out. So you'll have a little slider and then you can adjust the distances and adjust the wind speed once you get them there. When you're ready to export, you're gonna go to File, um, Export to Game. And we'll save this out. And the ST file is the one that is specifically made for HDRP and URP to come out with. You can preview your atlas if you need to see your textures that are coming out. But most people are going to grab the preset here. We go to Unreal Engine as well. Uh, we also have a VFX version of this software. The Unity export here, I've ran, for this one, I want my uh, billboard to come out there. And then I'm going to put everything in the Atlas. This might be a lightweight background tree. I probably would spend a little bit more than 20 minutes on it. Um, you can move and resize these guys as needed as well. So we're in. Um, we're in a very quick build, <laughs> like we're in. Um, but with Speed Feed Basics. And once again, if you guys want to check out the longer tutorial, we've got more coming. So let's be dreamy, your friend. I can take questions as we're in if, if we needed. We've got about five more minutes. Um, or you guys can just come say hey to us in the booth. Um, also, yeah, y'all are welcome to scan this if you want specific speed tree um, for wind stuff. So thanks for watching, guys.